All right, so the next topic we'll talk about are what are these things called quad or oct trees. Now these are data structures that help you organize your scene that enables you to query the data structure to find out whether you should be considering um, considering your geometry and you can remove or ignore whole regions. In case it's not clear, quad stands for four and oct stands for eight and that'll be meaningful uh, very soon. Now not everyone sees it this way but I always see these as kind of a generalization of binary search. Binary search, okay? Into two dimensions or three dimensions. So let's let's take a look at how this how this works. So quad tree. So as a two D space partitioning structure. And what we do is at any point in time when um, I have a scene like this, so let's say this is my, my world, at any point in time, I break it down into quadrants, hence the name quad tree, right? It's a two-dimensional binary search. So 2D space partitioning structure where at each level, We break it down uh, into quad into quadrants. Break the space into quadrants, and we do this um, recursively. Okay, so you can imagine I have this scene here, and then I can break down my remain my next quadrants here. Each one of them can be broken into two. You know. And then I broke it into two lines, four quadrants, four again, and I can do it again, I can do it again, I can do it again. And so if we do this, we end up getting a, tr a, a hierarchical tree structure. At the top, we have our full space, right? And then you have this breakdown into quadrants. Each quadrant gets its own subtree, okay? And I'm only going to draw the one here just to keep it clean. Maybe I'll draw the second one over here real quick. And then if you break it down again, Yet again, each quadrant, I should make these arrows. They all get their own region. And we can break it down and again, and we do that and as far as we want to. So we get this hierarchical structure, and that's basically you know, how binary search sorts things into left and right, left and right. Here we can go left, right, up and down. So if an object is in one quadrant, it only has to be in that one subtree. We don't have to be, it doesn't have to be in the other subtree. So we can do this statically. So we can have a static tree. Okay, we can have a static tree. And if we have a static tree, then we just generate from the get-go the tree completely to some let number, you know, n levels. The benefit of doing it this way is you can pack it into like an array structure or something. You don't need a lot of links, like a linked list. You don't need a lot of mallets. You can just pack it into the predetermined structure and index it nicely. And you can actually save a lot of memory and it becomes very quick to work with. And then if I have this static, the way that this works is we insert objects into the tree into the lowest level we can. where they're completely contained. So let me show you what that looks like. So you can imagine I have, here we go. This is my space, not my viewport, remember this is my space. And what I've, I break it down Maybe I can use another color. I break it down. One, two, three, four. So that should be enough. Oh, I'm running out of battery. Could be worse. We break it down, we break it down, we break it down. Now remember, of course, at each quadrant, I'm going to draw 
this one. This gives me a, a new structure like this, right? Which has its own subtrees and so on and so forth. Now, if I insert an object over here, let's say, let's pick this color. If I insert a circle here, you can see that I can't put it at the bottom of these guys here, the bottom nodes, because it actually exists in two nodes at once. This red thing actually exists in two nodes. So if this is object number one, I have to put object number one right in this node here in the tree. So if I come up here, you can imagine that the, you, at this node here, you would store that object, okay? Now, if I have another object I put in here, you can see how that's completely contained within that bottom node. So if this is object number two, then it goes into that bottom node. And so what you want is you want the you know the object to be to be as low in the tree as possible, and it's only it, it's um, only higher up when it can't be contained with that smaller node at the bottom. If it's too big for it or it straddles the boundary, you put it into into the um, into the node above it. So and then you can actually query the tree um, to see if to see if uh, your object intersects with your with um, you can query the tree to see if any of the objects in the space intersect with what, what shape you're trying to query it with, whether it's a view frustum or a shape or a ray. Um, you can query the tree to, to, to see whether these objects intersect. Now I'm going to come back to that. So this is a static tree. We also have a dynamic tree. And I've implemented both, where the, the static tree is you just populate from the get-go it uses more memory, but hey, no links, no link list, no jumping. It's just bam, you know, pack it into a space. The dynamic tree, or sometimes it's called lazy um, allocation, you only subdivide when needed. A level. If the end of how many objects are in there is is bigger, I should say if I should do it another way, if more than and objects in the zone. And you can pick n to be whatever you want. It's very common to pick it to be um, two, right? So the way that works is, again, the goal here is to minimize, um, the goal here is to minimize how many objects we have to check for visibility. So I have this, this, this tree, you can imagine, where like this, um, as I insert, right now I don't need anything. I, don't, I put an object in here. Cool. I don't need to subdivide. But now I come with a second object. You, we have two objects. Let's subdivide. Bam. Bam. And now I only have um, one object in each zone. So if I'm going to query the tree, I don't, I don't have to check those two objects. Now of course with two it might not seem worth it, but what's going to happen is very quickly you're going to see that this is going to um, this is going to quickly explode. So this red object here, as you can see, straddles two zones, so it stays in that parent node at the top of the tree. But as I add more things here around here, you'll see again we subdivide as needed. So this parts where um, no objects they stay sparse. And the spots with a lot of objects, spots with a lot of objects, they start becoming a lot more, a lot more dense. Okay. So once we have the tree made, we query the tree, right? And again, depending on your application, there's different ways you can do that. Now we are doing it um, for visibility, so we can query the tree with. Our viewport. Remember, remember, we're in two D right now. Only get objects that are that that overlap um, our viewport region. Now, 
So it looks kind of like this. So here's my coordinate system. Okay. And then I've overlain it um, a quad tree. It's going to get messy real quick. I've overlain a, qu a quad tree onto this region, right? Oops. Let's try that again. So we have this really dense tree um, where it's all packed, all packed, right? Bam. You know, when I draw it like that, it doesn't seem obvious, does it? You split first, then you split. Okay. And then what you'll see is I'm going to come by with my camera. Woohoo! Let's not do that. I'll come by with my camera. And then I only I, I use the tree to query the, those zones against the triangle or the sorry the rectangle of my camera. So as I query this, because it's a tree, the tree structure, the first thing I do is I look at the main zone and say, well, of course it's in there. And then I look at the next layer, right, of my of my area. And I go, well, you can see here, and I'll just I'll just um, highlight that out so you can see the axis a little better. You can see here that my view port, it doesn't look at all over here. It doesn't look at all over here, but yeah, you know what? We got to check these out further. And then when we go down, so we've already excluded half the space. And in this space here, where our, you know, it's going to look something like this, right? As we, as we drill down, this space again, is subdivided oh okay well it's actually only comes in like this so we don't need to check this region we don't need to check this region and by the time you're done you're going to get this this um, you're only going to have the ones I'm highlighting here the only ones with the objects we're going to have to check and of course the parent nodes so you can do this querying of the tree and get this list of objects. Now, if you only have five or six objects in your tree in your world, you might think, "Boy, this is a lot of space." But if I have, let's say, ten million polygons, right? Bam, um, and let's say they're reasonably evenly distributed. I can quickly discard, discard um, five on the left, and then maybe another two to three around here before even doing any checking whatsoever. So I just traverse the tree to collect which polygons may be visible and I discard, um, discard the rest. We can also use this, this is a 2D data structure, but you will find quad trees used in 3D when there's little height. For example, you can imagine using this kind of data structure on a surface tile game, right? Where something like Civilization, where you have like a world that's very flat with little height. You can imagine that you just use the quad tree to lay things out and you can optimize your space that way. Okay, so that's the quad tree. We break our space into four. We do it again and again and again, such that we don't need um, such sorry, such that we can query the space with our view volume to find out what might be visible or not. And then the actual polygons that we have to check for culling and clipping is much, much, much fewer. Okay. So that's an oct tree. Now, i uh, sorry, quad tree. I want to talk briefly about the oct tree, which is the relative. If the quad tree was in 2D, the oct tree is basically the same thing same as the quad tree but it's in 3D. So what we do is we take our space instead of dividing our space into four like we do with the oct tree, a uh, quad tree, we break it into a volume. Right like that. There we go. And so we break it into a volume where we break it into that shouldn't it should be dotted right we break it into eight quadrants now that's a bit messy but you can imagine how 
just like a Rubik, not like a, like a two by two Rubik's cube, basically. I have the top quadrant, then it has the next one over, and then there's the one on the front. This is the top still, and then the other one here, and this is the top, and then we do the same thing for the bottom. There's one down there and one down there. And so my drawing is absolutely terrible. But you can imagine having these eight subcubes come out of your quad tree. These oh, tree. See, there we go. Those look like cubes, right? Let's color them. Green is green. Um, red is this one. This is red. And then let's just do this one here. Fuchsia, fuchsia. Yellow is yellow. Kind of like that, right? So you can imagine we have these cubes um, uh, that are that are in this kind of order, like that. I won't do them all. I won't do them all. I promise. Okay. So it's basically a quad tree, but in three D. Now, although it's a terrible diagram, I hope that through the process of drawing it, you're able to see. So this is just like the the quad tree. The algorithms work the same. Everything works the same. And the only difference is at each level, you break it into eight points. Eight sub subregions, I shouldn't say points. And you still nest them and nest them and nest them and nest them. And then once you do that, you can imagine having this massive qu um, space that's now all subdivided up nicely, right? Then you place your view volume in the space. I'll try it a little differently. You place the view volume in the space. Yeah, that's terrible. But anyways, this is the view volume. You place that into the space and you query that against all the subdivisions. And you go, okay, which, which octant am I in? Okay, and you can do that. And just like with the quad tree, you throw away whole regions, anything behind the camera, right? It's instantly discarded as you traverse that tree. So you, need, you do need to solve the, the math of how to intersect those cubes with your frustum. But once you get that done, um, you can do that recursively. So you place the view volume into the structure to query, get a list. Of potential visible um, objects. So let's talk about this is an arc, 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 arc tree. So let's talk about the pros and cons of these arc trees and quad trees. The pros of them, uh, the pros of these are they're very fast to build. Everything's axis aligned. It's not like the binary space partition where you're doing all this funny math and trying to optimize. You just build. It, you can do it real time. You don't have to pre-do it. Axis aligned um, splitting. It makes it easy to test and to, to build as, as well. Makes testing, um, I should say querying. and building simple okay so it's actually pretty um, it might not look like it right now but it's actually not bad to figure out the geometry because it's so recursive you just solve the cube versus frustum once and you're done and you can use it recursively so it's actually not bad to do it also supports because it's so rigid um, dynamic and moving objects pretty well Right, you can insert quite easily. You don't have to restructure the tree like you would with the binary space partition, and then moving objects, they can move between cells. Okay. 
And especially if you use the lazy version or the, um, the, the um, not the static, but the dynamic one, where you build as you go, if you use that one, then it's very good for clumpy scenes. And what I mean by clumpy is basically scenes with sparse and busy areas. Right? So you can imagine as you're subdividing, like this example here, the really busy areas can get really, really subdivided while the sparse area stays empty. Right? So it's and then because it's only one level here, you test against that level. If it fails or it hits, it doesn't matter. Um, you're done. You don't have to keep digging down and doing more and more tests. So it supports those that, that mix of clumpy and sparse very well. Of course, there are problems. There are, there are problems, that's not gonna work. Yes, I've just made a nightmare for all the red, green, colorblind people. Let's try that again. All right, problems. So small objects, they may not fill a subdivision, they might even get close. They may be really small even at the bottom. And so what happens is you get a lot of false hits. Right? So you end up testing too often. So let me just draw that out. So you can imagine that here's my you know tree and then la la layers, layers, layers below. At the bottom layer, I'm this big. But my objects still might be this big. They're really small. So even though when I do my test, I go, oh yeah, you hit objects in here, you hit an object in there. Um, oops. You might almost never hit it. It might still be like, okay, I'll test it, but it's so far away. So if your objects are really small and the cell is really big, you don't get that benefit of pre-testing the cell as an estimate of whether or not that object is going to be, is going to be hit or not. Okay? And you get the same kind of problem with many small objects right you have lots of small objects this results in many small empty parent nodes right we're going to have lots of these chains here of empty parent nodes with at the bottom this massive space with a little red dot in the middle and so we do all this traversing, we hit more often than we should, and then when we get come and actually check if the dot is in our space, it's not, we call it anyway. We've wasted our time. So it doesn't work well when you have uh, don't have a good ratio between the cell size and the density of the objects, okay? You can have a lot of wasted traversal. So that's it. That's quad trees and arc trees. Um, a very convenient space subdivision that helps you. You can query and you can really simplify your, your visibility problem.